Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great and studies are going in full swing. In today's video, we will try to cover two important questions which have come in the November 2023 SFM or currently now called as AFM paper, which created some confusion and some doubts for students as well. So in today's video, we'll focus largely on the concepts solving and trying to understand what needs to be done if a similar question comes in the exam. So we'll keep it short, crisp and relevant. So there has been a lot of talk around these questions as well, but what we will currently focus on is more on the solving, understanding and what is to be done from an exam perspective. Okay, so first of all, you have question number 2a, which is on the binomial and risk neutral calculations and question 4b, which is on something called as cheapest to deliver concept. So over here, as you would be aware, option valuation can be done using three methods, using intrinsic value, binomial option value or black and souls. Within binomial, there are various methods possible. The institute over here, what does the institute do in this question? It asks you to solve for the option value using either the binomial method. It does not outline which specific method and then there is something called as risk neutral method. Now, the risk neutral method is quite clear. It is a method which is a risk neutral probability method whereby we assume that the company's share price today will be based on the present value of future possible share prices. So in a binomial, because it is binomial, it is one of the two possible prices. And hence, considering that, we try to find a price of up move and down move. This is fairly easy. We will even try that and this should not be a problem. But when you go to the second method, well, the institute just uses the word binomial and we'll read this. So how do we interpret binomial? Which method to be done? What is done in the institute study material? What is to be done with the exam? Questions answered. And we will just quickly review that. So let us review question number 2a. Following is the information pertaining to shares of Omni Limited. Current market price is 420. Let's say this is S0 price today. Strike price XP is 450. Maximum price that is the price of up move is 525. This is if the price goes up. Minimum price if the price goes down is 378. Continuously compounded rate per annum is 8%. And E raised to RT is given to you as 1.0202. Calculate the three months call option using binomial model now this is a little bit of problematic so which method within binomial to be used and what if a similar language comes in the exam and second is a risk neutral method the risk neutral method is a risk neutral probability method which is the method that we generally use as we say that if nothing is going in the exam you will generally solve using the risk neutral probability method which gives you a slightly easier version of solving so in this particular case if i were to solve let us say if we look at the probability of the price going up and going down. Let us say over here, the current market price is let us say 420. The price can possibly go up or go down. The strike price or exercise price is let us say 450. If the price goes up, it goes all the way up to 525. It goes down, it goes down to 378. So under the risk neutral method, if the price actually goes up, SU, the price goes down up or as it goes down, let's say SD, then what will be the call option value? Call option is the right to buy and it is a right to buy at 450. And if the price actually goes all the way up to 525, then the option will be worth 75. Sir, how did we get 75? Well, it is 525 minus 450. That gives you 75. However, if the value of the share were to go down, then the call option will be worthless because you're getting a chance to buy something at 450, which in the market is 378 and hence it will be worthless. So if I were to find the probability of an up move, let's say I call it as P, the probability of a down move, we call this as one minus P. And as a result over here, if you want to find P, you will say that the price of the share today, which is 420 has to be based on the possible prices that the share takes in the future. Well, the share can actually be worth 525 in the future with the possibility of P or it can also be worth 378 in the future, which is a possibility of one minus P. However, this will be worth in the future and hence you will divide it. Well, usually you will divide it by three months. So one plus 0 0.08 into three by 12. That is what you would have taken. But because it is continuously compounded, it is, let us say you are going to take the continuously compounded rate. So this is, let's say E raised to R. What is R? That is 0 0.08 into T. Well, T over here is probably 3 by 12. And as a result, this is E raised to 0 0.02. Probably E raised to RT must be E raised to 0 0.02, which is given to you over here, which is 1.0202, which logically does appear to make sense. And hence, this will be 420 equals 525P plus 378 minus 378P 
the entire term upon 1.0202 therefore if you multiply this is 420 into 1.0202 which will come to around 428.48 minus if you take 378 on the other side and this equals 525 minus 378 comes to around 147 p therefore if i were to subtract 428 Point four eight minus three seventy eight, and divide this. So that is fifty point four eight. So your P over here will be fifty point four eight divided by one forty seven. Divided by one forty seven, and hence this comes to around point three four three four. And therefore, one minus P should come to one minus point three four three four. That comes to let us say. Point six five six six. Now, what do we do with this? Well, we try to find the value of the option. So we'll say, well, if the value of the share is a present value of the future possible share prices, the value of option today should also be the present value of future option prices. So when we look at the future option prices, that will be the price today, which is up C zero will equal price after three months. That can be seventy five with a possible chance of point three four three four. Plus zero with a possible chance of chance of point six five six six. This again will be the payoff. Let us say after three months divided by one point zero two zero two, and hence you will get seventy five into point seventy five into point three four three four. That is twenty five point seven five five divided by one point zero two zero two, and this comes to around twenty five point two five. So this is around twenty five point two four or two five as the case may be. Approximately, you can even call it as twenty-five point two four or two five. So, if I were to see the solution over here in the second part, value of the call option using the risk-neutral method. The risk-neutral method, as mentioned even in the institute search study material, is a risk-neutral probability method. And hence, if nothing is given here, it is specifically asked. So, we will solve that. We will get twenty-five point two four. So that should be fairly easy. Now the question arises that what method should you use under the binomial method if it is asked in the institute uh, question? So if you go through the study material, so if I open the study material over here, there is on page number nine point two one there is some discussion about binomial model, and when they discuss about binomial model, they largely discuss regarding something which we usually called as a riskless hedge. Remember. when you create a riskless hedge some people also call this as a uh, delta hedging portfolio whatever name you want to call it but this is the method that the institute usually follows so what happens in case of a riskless hedge you will go long let us say x shares and you will go short one call option so you create a portfolio which is a hedged portfolio and that hedge it can be called as x that can be called as delta different people have different ways of calling it however it is short call and long x or delta number of shares if you see over here it is clearly mentioned so in such a situation a hedged position can be established by buying the stock and writing options so that is the method that you need to do again different ways can be taken for solving this you can solve in either of these ways but that is the way the institute has particularly solved over here so in case the question asks you merely binomial model and not risk neutral because if you go to see they have given you a separate so binomial 7.1 an example sum is given and then risk neutral is given as 7.2 so risk neutral they treat as a separate method to find the value of a uh, value of an option again the answers will be the same but as you would be aware the methods are different so when we look at a question just telling you to solve uh, to find an option value then you can use any of these methods the risk neutral method or the risk less hedge method any of these method we would prefer preferably solve using the risk neutral probabilities method however if the question asks you to solve using risk neutral probabilities and also asks you to solve separately using binomial then as per the institute study material what they have done is they have taken the risk less hedge method having said that if you even solve some using some other method ideally if it is an acceptable method marks should be given but whether they are given or not should they be given or not is not uh, 
is a debatable topic not to be discussed at this point at least we will try to do at least a method that or get clarity from an exam perspective so over here when we look at let us say a binomial model let us say for this the binomial model will be something which we call similar to a riskless hedge two ways in which you can solve i'll just discuss both the questions again your position should be long the shares how many shares we don't know some people call this as x institute calls this as delta maybe a triangle a greek alphabet and you will go short one call so for going short one call you will get a premium called as c0 or let us say price that is a cash inflow and hence this will be let us say a cash inflow apart from that you are going long shares how many shares well x number of shares or delta number of shares we don't know there are multiple ways in which you can find that but whatever be the price today you will have to invest that so x0 into x or the spot price today into the delta now this can be calculated by taking the position let us say after a year and let us say after a year or in this case after three months you would say that there are two possible positions as you can see over here the share can take 525 when the call option will be worth 75 or the share can take 378 when the call option let us say is zero but because you have taken a hedged position your answer after three months would be the same so you would say that for example how much do i need to invest today i'll say 420 x is what i need to invest today minus c0 that is the amount of the call option premium that i will get this is the position today what will happen let us say after three months the position can take one of the two possibilities so this is 525 x this is your long position minus let's say 75 because you are an option writer the holder will exercise and you'll have to pay 75 rupees or 378 x minus zero in the second case the call option will lapse and because the position is hedged this is equal and hence if you do the working over here basically the way it functions is 525 x minus 378 x for example equals 75 minus 0 now the institute also formulates this using an equation it is not anything new that you are studying it is just an equation that the institute uses so what icai does over here is rather than showing all of this workings it says okay let me take x common over here this is 525 minus 378 equals let us say 75 minus 0 therefore you don't need to do so much of complications i'm just trying to link it to a formula that is there in your study material so this is x equals 75 minus 0 upon 525 minus 378 so what is this formula x is what the institute calls delta equals c1 minus c0 or let us say cu minus cd so call option value if the price goes up minus call option value if the price goes down upon su minus s z s d so what is s u s u is the spot price if they go up s d is the spot price if they go down so if i show this in the institute study material they show this formula for example delta over here as you see over here is phi minus zero five would have been call option value if it goes up okay there you see over here cu minus cd upon su minus sd students say that this is a new formula different formula no we have just probably taken the logical way reached up to this value and you get the answer do i need to do all of this in the exam in my opinion no you can directly solve and you can come to the same conclusion but otherwise if you don't want to do all of this in the exam you can directly remember this formula and say x or delta as the case may be can be cu minus cd upon su minus sd and thereby this will be what 75 upon i think 147 if i'm not wrong 75 upon 147 which comes to approximately 0.51 so this means that you'll have to go long 0.51 shares for every call option shorted so if you do that what will be your portfolio value let us say after three months maybe your portfolio value will be 0.51 let us say in the second case which is the easier case into the spot price which is 378 minus zero so this will be 0 0.51 into 378 
comes to around 192.78 sir can i take the other possibility well of course you can even take alternatively you can say 0.51 into 525 minus 75 if you go and solve you will get exactly the same answer which is 192.78 either ways you solve this will work so over here let us say this is a portfolio position after three months but you want to this is a risk less portfolio it is a hedge position so after three months you get 192.78 what will be the value today so if i want to find the value today i'll have to find the present value so that is 192.78 192.78 divided by 1.0202 so that comes to how much divided by 1.0202 comes to i think 188.96 so this is around 188.96 which means i need to invest 188.96 today however somewhere earlier we have also said that today what you need to invest is 420x minus c0 institute calls this as p so therefore you call this as 420 into 0.51 minus c0 i don't know what c0 is that is what i need to find equals 188.96 therefore c0 or the premium will equal 420 into 0.51 that is 214.2 minus 188.96 minus 188.96 which is exactly 25.24 which we also found using the risk neutral probabilities approach so when you look at when you look at this you will get 25.24 if I just cross reference this with the institute suggested answer as well, what they have done is they have prepared the binomial tree and they have written this. Probably there is an error over here. There is a printing mistake. It should be delta if they directly want to find is CU minus CD upon SU minus SD, which is basically 75 minus 0 upon 525 minus 378 and hence this comes to 0.51 otherwise if you take this ratio it does not come to 0.51 it comes to something else which is wrong 0.51 is correct but the calculation that they've used probably is wrong and then they say that okay that means the initial investment will be 0 0.51 into 420 that is for the shares for every call options shorted the value of the portfolio is 0 0.51 into 378 they've taken only one of that which comes to 199 192 in today's terms you will take the present value that comes from 188 and accordingly you will solve they've done this directly we do it using a slightly longer method but in the exam if you only get to find option value then you will solve using the risk neutral probability the easiest if you're asked risk neutral along with binomial then you will solve the binomial approach using the riskless hedge or the delta portfolio hedge approach as you call it from an exam perspective okay the second part of this question is the theory part which says state the basis of valuation options under these models the basis under a risk less hedge is the fact that you're creating a portfolio which is long the shares as you can see over here binomial model using an approach called as risk less hedge they clearly mention that even in the suggested answers whereby you create a portfolio which will have the same value at expiration hedge will have an equal position which will have short the one call option and long x or delta number of shares whereas risk neutral probabilities would take probabilities which should be attained in order to ensure that the prices reflect the upper and lower prices okay so that takes care of question number uh, two sub point a other question that we want to discuss over here is question number four sub point b uh, again there was one problem in this paper if you are aware in question number five where there is a late cancellation question they have given a gap of 10 days which was there earlier for fed i automatic cancellation now the gap is only three days the institute had uh, from what we understand clarified and said that okay we kind of made a mistake over here and it should have been three days only and they had given marks but again uh, that is not something that should have happened but there will be a gap of three days as per the updated fed i rules only that is there in the study material as well okay now there's one more question that is 4b which is on the cheapest to deliver bond concept now this is a concept which arises in interest rate futures remember in interest rate futures there's a notional bond there's no actual bond so if you actually have to do the delivery if you have taken the short position for example and if you have to do the delivery if you have entered into a short interest rate future and there is a notional bond and if you have to give the delivery how will you give the delivery because a bond is notional 
and as a result the institute not institute in practice there's a basket of bonds which are provided by the exchange which can be taken as a proxy for the given bond but again these bonds are not comparable exactly and as a result the exchange gives a conversion factor they say that for every bond what is the conversion factor generally superior bonds will have a higher conversion factor inferior bonds will have a slightly lower conversion factor how that is calculated will be done by the exchange you will be given to in the question so if you are a short position if you have entered into a short position then at maturity if you have to deliver that bond you don't have the bond because it was notional so as a proxy you will substitute and deliver some other bond now for you to deliver that other bond you will go to the market at the date of expiry buy that bond by paying the spot price and in return you will get the future settlement price adjusted by adjusted by the conversion factor so ideally in order to maximize your gains what should you do you will try to deliver a bond which is what we call as cheapest to deliver bond so what is the formula that we need to remember if you are a short position you should get the future settlement price so you will get the agreed future settlement price so ideally you deliver the bond as promised and get the future settlement price however the same bond is not available and hence you get a comparable bond so future settlement price into let us say conversion factor so this will give me my cash inflow for uh, on account of delivering that bond but i'll have to buy that comparable bond from the market and hence i will have to incur the spot price this is the spot price so if i take the difference between the two the difference between the two should i will try to deliver the bond whereby i get the best possible difference between the two so this is the spot price that i'll have to incur in order to buy that bond so that i can deliver so this will be a cash outflow and once i deliver this bond i will get a cash inflow from the exchange i will try to take a position whereby i get the maximum or the best possible gain so this is a formula that you need to remember just in case a question like this comes so question 4b in march of 2022 smd bank sold 7% interest rate futures underlying notional 7.5% coupon bonds so there are notional 7.5% coupon bonds so these bonds in reality do not exist the exchange provides the following details of eligible securities that can be delivered that can be delivered so let us say if you have to deliver then instead of this notional 7.5% coupon bond you will deliver a proxy security but that proxy security may be better worse off etc and hence the exchange gives certain conversion factors so there are around 1 2 3 4 5 securities quoted spot price of these bonds and the conversion factor is given to you so there are various conversion factors quoted spot price so if you go to the market you will have to buy these bonds 9 to 6 4 is for example paid for a 6.55 bond recommend the cheapest to deliver security that should be delivered by smd if the future settlement price is 10000 so ideally if i had exactly the 7.5% coupon bond which was mentioned then on delivering i should have received 10000 but i am going to receive something else so what will i am going to receive well if i end up delivering 6.55 goi 2025 bond i will receive 10000 into 0.9060 that is 9060 or if i deliver the deliver the 6.8 gui bond i will get 10000 in 2.9195 so this is 9195 but to get 9195 i will have to deliver the 6.8 gui bond but do i have the gui 6.8 bond probably no so what will i have to do i'll have to buy it probably from the market which will cost me 8775 so it will cost me 8775 so a similar working over here would be done for all of these cases so this is 10000 into each of these numbers and then uh you will get these bonds let's say 9643 11000 uh 734 12000 428 this is my cash inflow that i will get on selling the bond on delivering each of these bonds i should have got 10000 if i deliver the 8.85 bond instead of 10000 i'll get 10000 into 1.2428 so that is 
12,428. But that bond will also cost me more. So over here my cash outflow, which is the quoted spot price that I'll have to incur, which is let's say 9264-877-5.5-9723-11463 and 12,017. So if I take the difference on the first case 9060 minus 9264 does not really make sense it gives me a 204 loss second case is 9195 minus 877 877 sorry 5.5 gives me 419.5 positive so over here let's say i'll write this over here 419.5 positive this was 204 negative next this is 9643 minus 9723 let us say 80 negative does not make sense 11463 minus 11 734 so this is 271 positive is a good bond and the last one is you'll get 12428 minus 12017 which is 411 so which of the bond gives you the highest well it seems this bond and hence this will be treated as cheapest to deliver bond so if i have to do the delivery then this is the bond that i will buy from the market and deliver on the exchange so if you go to see the solution over here they have done future settlement price into the conversion factor and then deducted the quoted spot price the place where this is the highest is the 6.8 percent bond which maximizes the profits and hence should be the cheapest to deliver bond so i hope these two points have been clear and uh, hopefully institute over here gives you a little more guidance when it asks you questions like binomial so that should be it i'll see you soon with some other videos till then goodbye take care study hard and do press the like button and share and subscribe if you like the video i'll see you soon bye bye take care